Welcome investors to the Absolute Return Podcast, your source for stock market analysis, global macro musings, and hedge fund investment strategies. Your hosts, Julian Klamachko and Michael Kesslering, aim to bring you the knowledge and analysis you need to become a more intelligent and wealthier investor. This episode is brought to you by Accelerate Financial Technologies. Accelerate, because performance matters. Find out more at accelerateshares.com. Welcome, folks, to the Absolute Return Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Klamachko. I'm joined by my co-host, Mike Kesslering. And on today's podcast, we welcome special guest, Weijo CEO, Richard Barlow. Weijo is a leader in connected vehicle data. On the show, Richard discusses lessons learned through the founding of several successful new ventures, the opportunity in the monetization of connected vehicle data, Weijo's roadmap to profitability, key growth initiatives as a newly public company, and more. So with no further ado, here's our discussion with Weijo CEO, Richard Barlow. So we are live with Richard from Weijo. He's CEO in part to getting into that. Richard, I did want to touch on your previous entrepreneurial journey. Uh, You started Weijo in 2014, but prior to that, the founder of LeadX.com. Can you talk about what that was all about, and more specifically, the lessons you learned from that experience that carried over to the founding and the evolution growth of Weijo. Yeah, so back in 2005, um, this was very much at the start of um, the sort of the explosion of pay-per-click campaigns and and ultimately new new sales inquiries being generated online. Um, but the filtering, the sophistication of CRM systems at that point was 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 in its early stages. And I saw an opportunity for insurers, and this was a UK proposition, but I saw an an opportunity for insurers, for consumer credit issuers, for banks, for all sorts of lenders, where they were starting to commit significant digital, less than 10% of the inquiries they were receiving were were within their own underwriting criteria. So, you know, an insurer, a carrier would want uh, safe drivers aged between the ages of 35 and 55 and yet they were getting 18-year-olds or 80-year-olds. They were getting DUIs. They were getting, they were getting what, what you'd call uncompetitive risks to quote on. There'd be lenders where they'd be super prime, but they may be getting a, a, mid-time, a mid-prime type inquiry. So I saw an opportunity. Uh, my background was, uh, was, was the internet sector. Saw an opportunity to build a platform to take live inquiries from multiple industries. I raised £350,000 from friends and family back in 2005. And they then raised a small amount of capital from a a fund called European Founders Fund. And what Leadex became was a clearinghouse for all unconverted sales inquiries. And uh, we received hundreds of millions of leads from over 2,000 vendors. And we built a single customer view of the majority of households in the UK, where we understood their exact requirements. And that business went from year one, uh, roughly a million pounds of turnover, then three million, then six, then eight, then 12. Then by 2014, uh, that business turned over around 60 million pounds. Only ever raised the initial two sets of capital from friends and family and then European Founders Fund. But um, I took that business from me, myself and I. Then I built a small exec team. Uh, We took a small uh, Regis office and that business scale to over 600 people. Uh, you know, we went through the 2008 crash. We went through, I think, seven pivots on the way to finding and building and being the leader. And, and that business uh, last year uh, was, uh, was 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 uh, was just going to run off now. But that, that that business last year turned over, I believe, over 100 million pounds. Um, so hugely hugely successful, hugely profitable. Gave me a great grounding in you know, in the ups and downs, you know, so I can tell you the point when we had a, uh, we had a debtor who owed us millions and we had to make some harsh decisions. Uh, we went through 2008 where lenders were just not paying their bills. You know, we had to, you know, I, I, I remember the scene where we had two office blocks and we had to close one of the office blocks because we just, our clients were not paying us. We were profitable on a, on a paper basis, but we weren't seeing the cash flows. So we went through all those pains, but it gave me a great grounding, put me in a, put me in a strong position Help me understand about about the about the intricacies of building a real time platform, and took those learnings to you know to to, to what became Weijo, where 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 now Weijo is arguably the um, the world's world's leading clearinghouse for connected vehicle data. But beyond that, we um, you know I, I've 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 learned to be you know a quasi technical director 
where, where, where we've also built incredible technical products that we're now licensing to OEMs as well. So great, great grounding for where we've got to. So you picked up a lot of learnings, significant momentum from the success at leadx.com, which brings us to the founding of Wejo. What was the ultimate principle or thesis behind starting that new venture? So one of, one of the lessons I learned from my previous business was compliance. You know, back in 2005, you know, there, there, there wasn't a CCPA Act in, in the US. GDPR in Europe didn't exist. The, um, there, there was very much an opt-out approach to data rather than an opt-in. And, you know, and I, I saw a sort of seismic change in the early 2010s where, where industries were waking up to the idea that actually there needs to be a more robust approach to data. So when I retired from my previous business and I, I thought and, and then I decided, you know, that I wanted to get going again, uh, I thought, well, actually, you know, almost my new business needs to be the antipathy of what my last business was uh, and what other businesses could be accused of is, is that actually you need to have an open dialogue with consumers around data. There needs to be clear opt-ins. There needs to be a clear debate. There needs to be a clear conversation. There needs to be a clear value exchange with data. So the shower moment, so to speak, was... I want to build a platform in automotive, which I have a strong platform, a strong passion for. Sorry, but I want to have a I want to have an open approach with consumers, with drivers around the fact that they've got data in their car. So we journey means to me we journey. This idea that actually we're all creating journeys. We all every time we we we, we have any form of mobility, whether we're getting in into a car rental, a car share, an Uber, driving our own vehicle, there is journey data being created, and that has value. But that value should be used for good. So we journey means to me we journey. We have this, we have what we call data for good as, as an overall DNA in our business around this. Actually, actually we won't sell data to bad actors or enforcement to ensure us to, to penalize you on your on your on your premiums. We will make sure the data is used to have safer cities, have safe, have safer roads, reduce congestion, reduce emissions. And you know, and and beyond that now, we're we're now recognizing that connected vehicle data is not just in the vehicles we recognize now, but actually what autonomous vehicles are going to become, which is where you know, we, we, we're now becoming very clear as a business that Weijo has become the go-to data ecosystem in, in the industry of automotive, otherwise known as OEMs, but it's also for AVs as well, autonomous vehicles. So you're involved in collecting billions of data points from connected vehicles and becoming the leader in that huge growth market. But could you explain uh, the business model, monetization strategy? How do you turn that data collection, collection and analysis into a profitable business? Yeah, so we've got a supply base of over 50 million vehicles where there's clear consent from every one of those vehicles. We don't arbitrage data. We don't buy data in from third parties. We don't buy mobile data and, and imply it's, it's, it's coming from a vehicle. This is direct data from connected vehicles. Of that, around 11.8 million vehicles send live data to Wejo's platform. We process at peak over 450,000 data points a second. And every one of those data points, we have a clear consent pattern. We, we understand the clear consent from every one of those data points. And we're processing around 17 billion data points a day. We've received over 477 billion miles of data, which is around 20 times more than Tesla. So we've got a huge volume of data. And, you know, that, that data is, is broad. Um, so, yeah, we have live location on a trend basis. But we also know, for example, uh, localized weather conditions. So, you know, imagine the power in multiple industries of knowing the local weather from 150,000 weather nodes, so to speak, driving around, picking up live temperatures or knowing, to, or knowing and identifying black ice on roads. So we get all this data in. There's no standard in industry, so we, we have become the standard. We are standardizing for multiple OEMs. In fact, we've got 17 OEMs and tier ones we're contracted to. But, uh, you know, there's not even a standard inside some, organ some OEM organizations. So we standardize that data. We keep the data in single tenanted environments, so there's never a uh, never risk of cross-contamination between multiple OEMs we work with. And then we appraise use cases where there's value in the data. So, for example, we provide data to um, small cities. We have a product called Wejo Studio where a smart city can, can log into a visualization and they can see that we've machine learned almost every intersection of every road in America. So in near real time, a city planner can understand how their city is, is, is performing. You know, where, where, where are the dangerous hotspots? Uh, where are vehicles doing illegal turns in a road? Is that, is that causing a safety issue? What do, what do the emissions look like based on a profile of vehicles? 
Um, can we can we better plan about where EV charging points should be installed? All really relevant points, which we're then paid for, and we and and we pay six on average sixty five percent of those receivables back to the OEM. So that's part of our model, and so marketplaces are a substantial part of our of, of our offering at the moment. But then what OEMs are saying to us is saying to us is that you know you're processing huge volumes of data. Can you now provide insights back? So, for example, we've built a live visualization for Hyundai in Korea, but we've got multiple OEMs now where, where in fact, we're being introduced by cloud providers to provide a, a middleware set of tools that, that, that enables OEMs to have a better view of their data coming out of vehicles. So they can better appraise parts performance. They can better appraise their, 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 the warranty provisions they've got on their own balance sheet. And those are just two examples. On that side, we charge uh, transaction fees based on data volumes, and we charge subscription fees as well. So we're, we're a conventional SaaS business with subscription fees and transaction fees and a marketplace business, which is you know, a subset of SaaS, where we rev share 65% of receivables back to the OEM. And now a word from our sponsor, Accelerate, one of Canada's most innovative and fastest growing alternative investment solution providers with a suite of institutional caliber alternative ETFs for investors seeking diversification and long-term performance. The Accelerate Arbitrage Fund, symbol ARB on the TSX, is the world's first SPAC-focused ETF with a diversified portfolio of SPAC and merger arbitrage opportunities in an easy-to-use, low-cost ETF. The Accelerate Arbitrage Fund ETF trades under the symbol ARB on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Find out more at accelerateshares.com. And as well, can you give our listeners a little bit of context as to the total size of the market that you're working with um, in terms of connected vehicle data? Yes, so by 2030, there'll be over 600 million vehicles. So just under half of the potential connected car park uh, will have embedded connectivity, uh, scaling from 125 million now. Um, now, vehicles are not just cars, they're also trucks, they're two-wheelers. The vast majority of new cars sold and new trucks sold new, and, and, and some bikes have now embedded connectivity this year and next year. So, And the OEMs need to choose a platform to, if they wish to appraise data, post, post a sale of the vehicle, to, to receive that live data. And why would OEMs and tier ones engage with Weijo? Is it just another opportunity to incrementally increase revenue? That's that's a small part of it now. Why OEMs, you know, and, and no one else can claim to work with OEMs one, two, and three by market share in the US. Um, you know, so we you know, we 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 position ourselves and we're proven you know, that we're we we're getting huge streams of data. We've shown we've got a capability of understanding. The value in data, you know, I mean, when, when we're processing 450,000 data points a second, so when we are, we're doing it all the time, we're real time. Um, but uh, so, you know, I can see a visualization now on the screen what's going on on our platform. But we're, we're identifying the needles in the haystack, right? We're identifying the values. So, you know, so so in the platform we built for Hyundai and Korea, we identified parking availability, multi-story parking, parking lots. That's a difficult job to do. You know, we, we weren't calling our third-party data asset to identify um the, the location parking lots we actually built a routine to identify um parameters or outcomes from the vehicle that that, that would indicate the vehicle was parking and we and that and, and we and there wasn't a preset routine where we're running we're running that routine and every one of the data points that comes to our platform for that particular oem so the vehicles normally could just be driving on the road but we need but we run all these routines you know and, and these routines are patent pending as well and we're running hundreds of routines on every one of the hundreds of thousands of data points we're processing every second. That's a big heavy lift. That's tough. That's that's not something that, that can easily be done. And that's why we're trusted by so many OEMs with their data assets. And speaking of the competitive environment, there are some other companies focused on connected vehicle data. What sets Weijo apart? Yeah, I mean, our, our competitors, you know, there, there, there are hundreds of providers who provide micro products and connected vehicle data. We're the leader whether on data processing and volume, whether on revenues, uh, whether on OEM engagement. So where there's, 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 there's room for hundreds of others to come in and, and, offer, and offer a small subset of products. We're the only ones that offer a complete data ecosystem for the OEMs. We're the only ones building a comm stack to enable OEMs c- to communicate with each other. And, you know, there's, there's space for others. And actually, some, you, know, you, you could argue some, some people 
our competitors but actually work and we just part from already and then one thing that you mentioned earlier was data for good can how, how are you able to ensure that the users of your data are are in fact using it as as you intend i mean it's the dna of our business but it's not just the dna of our business it's the 300 page uh, infosec agreements that we that 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 we that that we that we agree with our OEM partners. You know, I mean, on, on a commercial basis, we have a an incredibly robust approach to how we treat data. So it's not just, you know, and, but it's a mindset. You know, if you go in saying I'm going to sell data to the highest payer, well, you will be selling data to gambling companies. You will be selling data to all sorts of digital out, outlets that the OEMs would not necessarily approve of. So it's a mindset of who we will sell data to. So it's it's not just a very much a very clearly documented approach about how we do these things, but actually we ask ourselves, we sense check constantly, is this right for the driver? Is this doing good for society? Is this going to reduce emissions? Is this going to improve safety on the roads? Is this going to actually add value to the driver? So it's documented. I think there's over 900 documented procedures in the business. We've had a data advisory council since the start. We will we will maintain that when we complete our, our DSPAC over the next couple of weeks. It's very much how we behave and, what, and, and why everyone, why everyone at Team Wejo works for Wejo. So we're doing something for good. So you mentioned the reduction of emissions. I was wondering, can you explain how you incorporate that and, and how that would work? It's, I mean, I mean, also, if, if you want to reduce emissions, then you need to improve flows of traffic. What you don't want is you don't want vehicles sat, sat, sat idle with their engines running at traffic lights. Uh, for example, or, or stuck in congestion. So, for example, we've got something called RTTI, which is real-time traffic na- traffic light analysis. We can tell cities about what their traffic lights are doing. We, we've got the data. So, as well as scanning the majority of intersections on every road in America, we've also scanned the majority of traffic lights now. So, you know, so so we can help the city understand about. They can see where where, where traffic's building up. Uh, we've we've advised um, sports grounds on the day of games so we can say hey we can see the engine starting from the car park you need to change that traffic light at this intersection to green for the next 15 minutes to get the engines to get the get the combustion engines out of the city so that's you know and that's just you know and that's part of our esg mantra now is about actually you know and that's an important part of it beyond that we've we worked the likes of texas during during the hurricanes so very much you know we're we're focused on our, on our esg credentials we're focused on reducing emissions we're focused on safety we're focused on congestion that makes a lot of sense and one major initiative that you announced a few months ago is this going public transaction through a merger with virtuoso acquisition 800 million dollar enterprise value it includes as much as $330 million in cash to the balance sheet. What I found really interesting about your uh, SPAC merger deal announcement is within the pipe financing, I believe it got increased from $100 million to $125 million, but notable investors participating. There was uh, Microsoft, for example, Palantir, which you mentioned, and General Motors. Can you discuss you know what do these companies see in Weijo? I mean, I, I'm I'm very lucky that I you know I um, that we that we that we went through an incredible DD process, and um, you know Palantir appraised a, a lot of automotive and a lot of connected vehicle data platforms, so they chose Weijo as as their preferred channel. Um, you know we've we've had we've already had hackathons with them where, where we built incredible products. So it was a meeting of minds with Palantir. And Palantir themselves have said, you know, Weijo is a clear leader. Weijo has built 17 incredible OEM relationships. Um, beyond that, we've we've built an incredible relationship with Microsoft. It's not just a and it's not just an Azure cloud partnership where 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 where, the, where we're doing some interesting things with them. But beyond that, they're also a commercial partner where you know Bing Maps is used by hundreds of thousands of developers to to power your mobile apps and your phone. You know, you think of ways, you think of Google Maps. What you don't think of is, is that, you know, the rideshare businesses, the, the, the hundreds of thousands of developers who built mobility apps that use Bing Maps behind the, behind the scenes. Well, we're now providing data to Bing Maps to actually, or is your map, sorry, to actually provide a better experience to identify those roads that are closed. You know, because we process data in real time, we can tell you in real time if a road is closed. We can tell you if an intersection is closed. We can tell you if a lane on a highway is closed or is, or is not performing at peak levels. So working with Microsoft, where they're both a commercial partner and a strategic partner, was, was, was a great example. And then GM. GM have been consistent in their investments since they supported us three years ago. Um, we're, we're, we're super proud of our relationship with GM. 
Uh, and you know, it hasn't stopped working with any other OEM. As I say, no one else can claim to work with OEMs one, two, and three by market share in the connected vehicle space. So, you know, so, so GM wants, is proud of their relationship with, with Wejo. You know, so we've managed to work with every other OEM as well. In addition to the uh, headline grabbing uh, investors participating, this going public transaction does include a, a significant investment and uh, capital onto the balance sheet. Can you discuss what the use of proceeds of this capital raise will be? Yeah, so we've so we're so we're, we're raising up to three hundred and fifty-five now with the, with a pipe extension, and you know we what what we're not short of we're not we're not short of OEM demand. You know, our, our, one of our Achilles heels is that we've got OEM saying, you know, when are you going to be open in Latam? When are you going to be when when are you going to broaden your your APAC ambitions? So you know, so and actually we brought forward our our, our Japanese ambitions with with one of our other pipe investors, Sompo, coming on board. Sompo, a hundred and ten billion dollar Japanese insurer. So as as we do, so in terms of 355 million, we're focusing 125 million on on accelerating the OEM onboarding. So this is demand from OEMs who just want us to be more countries, you know. And that sounds, you know, at a digital point, that sounds quite simple. You know, it should be just pointing a pipe, but actually, it's the people on the ground. It's actually defining that it's it's building the marketplaces. It's building the broader SaaS solutions. You know, what what we're building in terms of SaaS for in Japan is different to what we're building in the US, for example. Another 125 million is to accelerate new products. We've got this live visualization platform called Wejo Studio. It enables us to, and we're already we've already built products in traffic management and mapping. We're now introducing uh, audience measurement into that platform shortly, and we'll be introducing new new platform over the coming years in multiple territories again. So Latin, APAC, uh, broad, more broadly into Europe, and obviously further expansion to NAFTA. And then the balance is more is is for is is is, for, is further regional growth around around you know and, and that's that but and that gives us the perfect opportunity to 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 um, to capitalize on on some of the other opportunities we've been offered by OEMs. And at the current stage of Wejo's business, raising capital, growing rapidly, still relatively early stage. A key question on investors' mind is, what is the roadmap to profitability? So, our, so we, so one of our key measurements is live vehicles on platform, and that's an important measurement. You know, it's, it's 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 not a theoretical or or what we'd like it to be. It's live vehicles sending us data that we can monetize, and we disclosed last year our live vehicles on platform, uh, and we're forecasting 14 million live vehicles on platform by the end of this year. That's an important metric, and it's a metric we'll be measure, we'll, we'll be measuring and disclosing in our 10Ks and our 10Qs. And then the other side, of, and then the other side is actually our unit economics on a, on a per marketplace basis. We um, we closed at the end of last year, 20, 2020, at forty cents per bit per live vehicle per year. We'll close this year at more than seventy one cents. Um, we're forecasting to go to eleven dollars sixty five by twenty twenty five when we have more markets open with more buyers. So we showed in our first two quarters scales of revenue. Uh, and we've shown throughout the year scaling vehicles coming on platform. So, in terms of how how, how investors and analysts can appraise Wejo, they will see a transparent approach to reporting, a transparent approach to live vehicles on platform, a transparent approach to unit economics per marketplace live, a transparent approach to the number of SaaS licenses we've sold to OEMs. So then, so anyone anyone looking at business can can have an, can have, can form a view as to how they see our business scaling over time. And now a word from our sponsor, Accelerate. Do you want to diversify your investment portfolio while benefiting the planet? The Accelerate Carbon Negative Bitcoin ETF, symbol ABTC on the Toronto Stock Exchange, provides investors with exposure to Bitcoin while protecting the environment. Accelerate implements a global tree planting campaign to sequester carbon emissions and help fight climate change. Up to 10% of ABTC's 69 basis point management fee will be allocated to Accelerate's annual tree planting campaign. For each $1,000 invested in ABTC, an estimated one net ton of carbon dioxide is expected to be sequestered each year. Buy Bitcoin, save the planet. Find out more at investabtc.com. Just back to your going public transaction, had you looked at other methods of going public and how how did the SPAC structure really uniquely fit the fit the needs of, of your company versus some of those other options? 
Yeah, I mean, we've been we've been successful um, in the private markets. We've raised over 150 million dollars, um, you know, um, and, and primarily from from a high net worth community. So we were lucky to be backed by some incredible supporters who who were long investors. But but we but um but at the same point, we were then getting more and more demand from OEMs who wanted us to be in more markets and more territories quicker than than, than the private markets could support us in. So we considered our options late last year. Um, and uh, we and we and we appraised a couple of SPACs that approached us, um, and 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 one thing that was key for me was 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 not just the access to capital SPAC SPAC offer, but also um, the the operators behind the scenes. And Sam Hendel uh, is joining us. He's he's on the board of Virtuoso. He's joining Bijo's board, and we complete this these SPAC. He uh, he founded Data Miner, uh, an incredible social media data business. And you know we saw great parallels with what's with what with what data miner has done in the social media sector to what we is doing in the in the automotive data sector, connected vehicle data sector. So an incredible operator in Sam, and then Jeff Warshaw, the CEO of Virtuoso, he's got incredible media experience. He's 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 bought and sold over 100 media assets over time. He's helped us mature our, our audience measurement product, and he's and he's he's bringing some great sort of thought around part of our M and A strategy, which we'll be implementing uh, in the coming years. So prior to getting letting you go, I do have one more uh, fun question. So looking out over the next few decades, what is the coolest potential application that doesn't yet exist that could be enabled by connected vehicle data? Like any wild ideas that you hope come to fruition? Yeah, I mean at the moment, and, and this is and this is not a wild idea. We we we, we are doing this. We will be doing this. Is that is that you know there's 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 hundreds of proprietary. Um, stacks around, around AV autonomous vehicles, and at some point they're going to need to communicate with each other. Otherwise, you're only ever going to get effective AVs in 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 certain cities in California, parts of Arizona, and a little bit of, of New York, a little bit over Europe. But there's not going to be nationwide or, or global coverage. There needs to be a platform that translates these hundreds of protected proprietary approach to AV, but enable a Waymo to communicate with the crews, for example. We will enable that. What excites me is that we're we're building the global lead in data as a data ecosystem, but we're also investing heavily in the com stack. We're investing heavily that beyond V2X, there needs to be a sub millisecond approach to vehicles communicating with each other. So eventually one day there will never be a crash. There'll never be a safety incident. There'll never be congestion. There'll be obviously no no emissions. And that's only when all vehicles effectively communicate with each other. We will enable that to happen. Well, that sounds like a wonderful future. No accidents. Talking cars uh, doesn't get any better than that. So, Richard, I'd like to thank you for coming on to the podcast today, talking about WeJo, We Journey, business model, the potential behind the company and this going public transaction. We wish you the best of luck, and we'll be monitoring the story as it progresses. It's exciting stuff. Thank you for your time. All right. Bye, everybody. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to the Absolute Return Podcast. This episode was brought to you by Accelerate Financial Technologies. Accelerate, because performance matters. Find out more at accelerateshares.com. The views expressed in this podcast are the personal views of the participants and do not reflect the views of Accelerate. No aspect of this podcast constitutes investment, legal, or tax advice. Opinions expressed in this podcast should not be viewed as a recommendation or solicitation of an offer to buy or sell any securities or investment strategies. The information and opinions in this podcast are based on current market conditions and may fluctuate and change in the future. No representation or warranty, expressed or implied, is made on behalf of Accelerate. As to the accuracy or completeness of the information contained in this podcast. Accelerate does not accept any liability for any direct, indirect, or consequential loss or damage suffered by any person as a result of relying on all or any part of this podcast, and any liability is expressly disclaimed.